Welcome, I'm Edward, the Training and Technical Sales Manager for RPB Safety. In this quick video, we're going to explain setting up, donning and doffing and cleaning your T-Link and PX5 PAPR respirator. Firstly, in the kit you would have received a PAPR, you would have also received the battery, the charger, the cable for the charger, a flow meter, a HEPA filter and also a pre-filter. Firstly, we'll start with the charger by getting that and attaching the charging cable. You can then plug that into an outlet. Then you can get the battery and insert that into the charger. You want to charge that battery for at least three hours before you start to use the PX5. Once the battery has fully charged, you can remove it from the charger and insert it into the sealed compartment within the PX5. When you close that door back, you want to ensure that that's locked in position so that that battery is sealed and out of the way of any potential damage from moisture or contaminants. Then you want to install your main HEPA filter. It's important to note that the HEPA filter is only going to remove dust and particulate down to 0.12 micron. To install the HEPA filter, you can remove the door from the PX5. Note that that door does not attach to the PX5 unit. It will attach to the HEPA filter once we get that in place. So to install your HEPA filter, you want to locate the two points up the top and then press down on the latch clipping that into position. You can then get the pre-filter and install it by making sure that it's located on all three points on the HEPA filter. Once that's in position, you can then get the main filter door and clip that into position. Your PX5 is now ready to go, and before we start, we can check it for flow by inserting the flow meter. That twists into position. Once it's in position, you can then turn the unit on. The unit will then go through its startup phase. It'll get air coming into it. You'll have to wait a moment for it to stabilize and you want to make sure that that ball is floating above the line for the correct altitude that you would be at. Once you've determined that you've got the right amount of flow, you can then turn the unit off and remove that flow meter. On the side of the PX5, you have several indicators. The first one is your battery life indicator. You've then got your fan speed indicator that you can adjust the fan speed by just pressing the on off button. You then finally have a filter life indicator. This is gonna change color as the filter becomes clogged and alerting you that you need to replace that filter once there's not enough room for air to flow through to keep you breathing within your respirator. Eventually, once the battery gets too flat or the filter becomes too clogged, the unit's going to start to alarm and vibrate so that it's alerting you to remove yourself from the environment to either change that battery or replace those filters. With the PX5, you can also remove the belt to help with cleaning this unit. You want to get this latch and lift up on it you can then rotate that belt holder and remove it from the PX5. That way it makes it easier for cleaning and decontaminating the PX5. 
It also makes it easier for storing this unit. To reattach that, you can locate the belt onto the back of the PX5 and twist that back into position. Then we get to the T-Link. With the T-Link, there's a series of collars on the shroud. First of all, you've got the outer collar, which will hang over your scrubs or gowns or Tyvek suit that you may be wearing. Then you have an inner collar that you can tuck inside your suit or gown to help with some of that air flowing down inside your suit to help keep you a little cooler in the environment that you're in. The most important part is the inner black bib that sits snug around your neck and can be adjusted with the cinch to ensure that there's no gaps allowing for any potential leakage of contaminants getting inside the respirator. It's important to know that this is a positive pressure respirator, so there should always be a positive pressure inside the hood, stopping any of those contaminants getting inside. To replace this outer shroud, you want to locate the clips on either side of the T-Link, which are underneath the Tychem material. I then locate the back portion of that clip and lift it up and release it from the T-Link. There's also a further video on YouTube that explains in detail how to unclip and reattach the T-Link. Once I've got that hood removed, I then reveal the main T-Link frame. This frame can be ratchet adjusted to fit your head. That way it keeps it fitting snug on your head. It can also be cleaned and the padding system on the inside can be unvelcroed and machine washed or replaced as needed. To replace it back in, just attach it back on to the Velcro. Now RPB does not recommend sharing respirators, but if you do have to for whatever reason, you want to take extra precaution around protecting the hygiene of your operators. You'd want to wear hairnets or do-rags or some other form of protection to give yourself a barrier between the respirator and the operator that's wearing it. With the airflow, the air comes into the back of the hood, flows over the top of your head through a channel. Some of that airflow is allowed to duck onto your head to help keep you cool, but most of that air is going to flow to an adjustable vent where you can adjust the direction of that airflow to be more over the visor or more over your face, depending on what's most comfortable. So now I'm going to reattach the Tykem hood to the T-Link by pressing it up inside, making sure that that bib is in position and underneath the jaw. I can then reattach the clips to the side of that T-Link. And I'm now ready to set it up and connect it to my PAPR. It's also important to know that adjusting it for size and getting it fitting snug on your head can all be adjusted underneath the hood without having to take the full shroud off. So to attach the breathing tube, we want to attach it first to the in inlet on the T-Link with the threaded end of that breathing tube. You want to make sure that this is done up tight so that there's no potential leakage getting inside that hood. Once you've got that end done, you can then attach the bayonet end to the PX5. 
that presses in and twists to its locked in position. Now that you've got the PX5 connected to the T-Link, you can now turn it on to have airflow flowing through. When you turn that unit on, you want to check the indicators and ensure that your battery is fully charged and that you're getting good airflow through that filter. You can then get the PX5, undo the belt, and attach it round your waist. You want to do the belt up so that it's snug and doesn't allow that PAPR to slip down. Once that's in position, you can then get your T-Link and you want to get to the black collar on the inside, letting the outer collars drape over the T-Link. Once you've got that black collar, you can then hold on to it and lift it up and over and into position on your head. Once it's on your head, you can then get up in, underneath it and adjust the head suspension to ensure that it's snug on your head. You can also tuck the collars in to your gown or suit as you need. And that's that inner collar. The outer collar would hang over the top of your suit, ensuring that nothing can get down inside the gown or suit that you may be wearing. So when it comes time to taking it off or doffing the respirator, you want to make sure that you're getting it either side and lifting it straight up and away. That way you're not allowing any contaminants to get inside the breathing zone of this respirator. You can then fold the shrouds to ensure that it's enclosing that breathing zone and place it down on a table. You can then remove the PAPR and turn that off, ensuring to check the battery life and filter life so that you need to recharge that or replace the filters as needed. You can then turn that PAPR off, then remove the breathing tube from the T-Link and that's now ready for cleaning and decontamination. Now when it comes to cleaning and decontamination of the T-Link and the PX5, we recommend you talk with your infectious control department to determine the correct methods and correct materials or cleaning agents or disinfectants to clean and disinfectant this equipment. For the T-Link, you can replace or clean the outer shroud and you can also clean and disinfectant the inner part of that T-Link as well, especially if you've got operators that are sharing these. Again, you want to determine the correct methods with your infectious control department. With the PX5 in its current state, it is IP65 rated. So therefore, it can be washed down or run through a decontamination shower. When you install the cleaning kit with the PX5, it then becomes IP67 rated, which can then be submerged for decontamination. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you for using our product. Take care.